Join me today for a review, a little bit of discussion on the movie Oppenheimer. Welcome back to those who've been here before. Welcome to those who are here to the channel. It's the Geek Cabal channel. I'm Bobby. And today we're going to be talking about the movie Oppenheimer, starring Cillian Murphy. I've heard other people pronounce his name differently, but that's how I heard it first. That's what I'm going with. Uh, so, just very briefly, uh, I'm not going to bother separating spoilers, because this movie is about events that took place, like, somewhere between 60 and 80 years ago. So, you know, this is historical stuff. Uh, there's not really any point in, like, saying spoilers because, you know, it's, it's, it's known. So, anyway, you've been warned. There will be spoilers. Uh, so, here goes. Uh, overall, I thought it was a really good movie. Um... Uh, thought uh, even though it is three hours long, it doesn't feel like it is. At least it didn't to me, because uh, I find the topic fascinating. Um, for other people, maybe not so much. Uh, there were parts I actually wanted more of. And, uh, yeah, like they, they would have had to split it into two movies. And Anyway, uh, so the three hours flies by uh, once it gets going. At the very beginning... The movie's a little, uh, I hate to say, I hate to say artsy, but it's kind of like, uh, like I was telling my friend this the other day, it's essentially like the video version of interpretive dance, where we get a whole lot of images and sounds that we don't know what in the hell we're generally looking at, with a lot of flashing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and here, there, and wherever, and finally after about, you know, I would guesstimate ten minutes, but I could be wrong, it's not like I was checking my watch in the middle of the theater. Uh, it settles into a movie, and not just lights and sounds that's trying to transform how movies are made here. Uh, which, if anyone was going to do it at the moment, it'd probably be Christopher Nolan. So, you know, I kind of thought, well, maybe this is how we're going to do things. This is going to be an interesting three hours if it is. Uh, but, uh, the movie, after you get past that little bit... The movie is, uh, well, it was easy for me to follow. I, I think most people could follow it, even though it does bounce around time quite a bit. And it definitely distinguishes one specific era by being in black and white in almost every single shot in that era. And so, you know, it's usually pretty clear when things are happening uh, because, you know, we have a bunch of bits in uh, most, a lot of the movie is... Oppenheimer explaining past events, so then we see those past events, and then we see how these are affecting a, an event in the future of when he's explaining them. So, uh, to kind of go into it, it's whenever he had to get his clearance renewed. Uh, this is well after uh, the bomb test, and there's uh, an individual who's basically trying to screw him over. And so he sets up this fake runaround uh, to make him waste a bunch of time and energy to ultimately say, no, your clearance isn't, isn't approved. Here, it's been revoked. And most of the movie is, I believe, technically, from that standpoint, him explaining things in the past and other characters explaining certain things that are testifying for or against him. Uh, and then you have how this is all affecting a Senate confirmation hearing uh, for another character you know, several years down the road because he is the one who set up the screw job, so it's relevant to his confirmation hearing. Uh, and then it kind of and it kind of bounces around a few points, uh, but then it really levels out whenever it gets to the Manhattan Project and the bomb and everything else. Now on that point. The movie is about the man. Yes, obviously that means about a third, a third or more of the movie is about the bomb. Uh, and then another, another huge chunk is about the moral ramifications of using those kind of weapons. 
So, you know, it is about the bomb, but it's there there's it's about the man. Okay, and he is humanized. He's a very complicated character. Um and to uh to really express this, I am gonna have to go down a few political alleys. I'm not gonna go very far down them, and I'm not gonna come out pro or anti or anything here because I don't like discussing politics like this but they are a core part of the movie. So, early on, pre-Manhattan Project, he has flirtations with communism. And, like, he knows several people who are outright members of the American Communist Party. And so, there are some other people who are working on the beginning stages of the project, and one of them in particular tries to tell him, look, I can't tell you what we're working on. And he's like, well, of course. I, he's like, you don't have to. I know what you're working on. And what, I know what you're obviously working on. Uh, and he's like, yeah, but we want you on board, but you've got to sever your ties with these people. Because, like, we know you're not a member of the Communist Party, but a lot of people around you are, and so it raises questions. And he, you know, tries as hard as he can to, to move beyond them, but <laughs> one of the people is his brother. So... You can't really just like, well, see you later. And so he, he runs into a lot of issues because of that. And uh, I knew going in that in his uh, that after the Manhattan Project, he was accused of being a communist. Um, and at least as far as the movie is concerned, he's ultimately exonerated from that. Uh, how In the hearing I mentioned. Uh, however, they're not entirely certain that he's a tight security guy because of certain things he's done up to that point. So... You know, it goes into that quite a bit, and how that affects him, and how it affected several other characters. Uh, one of the people that wanted to bring on board ends up getting drafted, and then lives his life, you know, laying railroad track, because the government just destroys him. Um, and there is a woman that he's having an affair with, who, you know, he keeps going back to her, and so they're like, look, you know, we know you're going back to this woman. Like, the FBI is following you. So, you know... Uh, but yeah, it's it's more a matter of, like for him, at least the way the movie portrays it, it's more of an intellectual curiosity. It's a, hey, if we're going to try to make the world a better place, we need to be open to all ideas, and ultimately concludes that those are not great ideas, um, which is why he never joined, and uh, why ultimately he tries to, to distance himself. So, you know, you have that, and you need, to, you need to understand the context of the times. You know, even though the Nazis were our opponents in World War II, like, we weren't exactly pro-communism before that. We accepted that the Russians, who by World War II were communist, were allies, but it was allies against another threat. Not allies as in, come on over, check out all of our secrets. Because uh, that point is argued by some of the people in the movie, that they should be sharing some of their secrets with the Russians. Uh, which again raises the ire of, well, are you a communist or not? Because why do you want to share them with the Russians? And you know, he's like, logically, well, there are allies. It has nothing to do with communism. So, and they, you know, eventually find out that there was, in fact, a spy within the Manhattan Project, which is why the Soviets got nuclear weapons a uh, short time after. So, yeah, so a lot of the movie, the movie does not focus on the, um, like, the science behind it. They touch on it a little bit, but for the most part, it's kept kind of in the abstract. This is not the normal Christopher Nolan movie where you need a, this isn't like Tenet, where you need a degree in temporal mechanics and probably a couple flow charts to fully understand just what in the hell is actually happening in this movie. Nor is it like Inception, where there's a lot of rules, but at least they're going to lay out the rules and maybe violate them a few times, and you've still got to second guess whether you're, everything you're watching is a dream or not. You know, it's, it's not like that. Uh, this, this is fairly straightforward. It's about, you know, like I said, it's about Oppenheimer managing a bunch of things. They mention certain advancements at various points, which for those of you that know much about nuclear fission and fusion and things like that, you know, you'll know what they're talking about, but essentially, 
You just have to accept that what they're talking about is big news. There's a reason why it's in the newspapers. And uh, you just have to kind of go with that because they're not going to stop and hold your hand and explain all the ins and outs of nuclear fission, which is probably for the best, but there's a handful of points where they might have explained it just a little bit better. The problem is to do that from a narrative standpoint is messy because these characters would not stop and mention things that they all already understand. They all already understand the implications of things. And when you get a group of like-minded people that understand the implications of things, they don't just blurt things out. That, that's, that's messy writing. So I understand why, from a narrative structure, they didn't do it, because they would have basically had to bring in another character to, ex to be like, well, what does that mean? You know? Now, they had one in The General, played by Matt Damon. Uh, but it would have eventually kind of seemed a little hokey, especially once we found out he has an engineering background. He at least would also understand some of the basic principles involved. So that's, that's one of my only, it's not really a complaint, because uh, I don't know how you fix that easily. And then uh, the only other is, uh, the only other like real downside to this movie, in my opinion, is that there are just so damn many characters in this movie, we probably should have had their names come up on screen and like what their specialty is beyond like physicist, which is basically everybody in the movie. And kind of kind of, you know, just real little blurb explaining how what they contributed or whatever. You know, in, in the simplest terms possible. Because again, the movie doesn't want to get doesn't get stuck in the weeds of how did all these things, you know, the, the how and the why of the physics. You know, you want to know all that, you know, you can look it up. Uh, it's also not overly complicated. Uh, once you understand uh, certain matters of, uh, well, matter. But anyway, so like I mentioned, about a third of the movie, probably a little bit more, is dedicated to the actual Manhattan Project. Um, and we see where, uh, I'm assuming the movie's accurate on this. I haven't double-checked, but... You know, he and his brother owned a ranch in New Mexico. And then whenever they're looking to, well, where are we going to build this place that we're going to sequester everyone? He's like, well, I've got, I've got the perfect place here in Los Alamos. You know, there, there's nothing here. And it's 40 miles from anything. So, of course, you can hide people here in a, in a, you know, a bunch of science experiments. And the others they hid at various universities around the country that were all feeding uh, information and, and data and outcomes into the plan. So, you know, you've got a bunch of that. Um, then there's, you know, the actual testing of the bomb. And that's, that's almost a footnote in the movie. Now, you would think that this is what people probably expected the movie to be. And like I said in, earlier, it's about the man. So, we all know that happened. So, it happens in the movie. And then we're right on to other things, you know. Which primarily, that, that's where like the last big chunk of the movie begins. And that has a lot more to do with the moral ramifications of the weapons. Uh, because even, even early on, Oppenheimer is still pro-using them once. You know, to demonstrate that they do work and that the U.S. does have this power. Now, the military wants to do it a second time to prove that they can do it again. And he's not really for that, because he thinks the Japanese will surrender after the first test. Um, who's to say, because history went a different way, we used both the bombs, and they surrendered after the second one. So, and, and you see him, you know, trying to justify to himself, well, you know, it saved all kinds of lives, and uh, but he comes out against making thermonuclear weapons. And he was against that, uh, whereas one of the other people on the project uh, was very for that because he saw that it was just going to lead to an arms race. And, uh, you know, sitting here in 2023, he wasn't wrong. 
but again, we don't know what would have happened otherwise. So it's, you know, hard to judge on things like that. And so in, in the movie, it doesn't really, you know, fall on that. Uh, but there is one conversation that he has with uh, Einstein at one point. Because one of the people on the project uh, is convinced that the chain reaction won't stop. And it'll essentially burn up the atmosphere and destroy the world. And so he goes and talks to him about that. And then he has a later conversation with him uh, when he's hired on at, I believe it was Princeton. And uh, the guy that hires him on is Robert Downey Jr.'s character. It's like, oh yeah, you know, he's it's Albert. He's out there all the time. And it's like, would you like me to introduce him? And he, you know, Oppenheimer's like, no, no, I, I met him years ago. Like, we're we're friends. He goes to talk to him, and he tells him a couple things. And this is probably kind of the the other like point of the movie. Uh, this is at, this is way after uh, the test. He's you know trying to settle in some kind of civilian life. And Einstein tells him, he's like, well, now, you, now it's your turn to deal with the ramifications of your actions. You know, because Einstein had to accept that he laid the groundwork for all this to be possible. And Oppenheimer has to live with the fact that he's the guy that actually made the bomb. So, you know, he tells him that and gives him a speech about how, you know, someday in the future, they'll give him a, a worthless medal and for him to just remember that it's not for him, it's for them to assuage their conscience for the role they played in everything. And of course, you know, you, you see him getting the presidential, uh, believe it's presidential medal of honor is what they gave him. And I believe it was Lyndon Johnson. Um, the details were kind of scarce at that point in the movie. So, but the other thing, that's when Arcelian Mur uh, Oppenheimer tells him about, he asks him, hey, you remember all those years ago when I brought you the, the paper talking about the uh, we might have started a chain reaction that's going to destroy the world. And he's like, I think we actually did. And he's not referring at that point to the use of one of the weapons, but the fact that now they've proliferated across the planet, and at some point they will be used. And uh, that's, that's the note the movie ends on, you know, the, the somber note of, well, hopefully he's wrong. But, you know, we'll find out. So... That's the, the darker end of the movie. Uh, the other dark point the movie brings up is that once he's done, the, the people within the government basically just want to chew him up and spit him out, and they have no more use for him. Even though he literally helped win the war, designed weapons that have, you know, done, that, that exist now, that we still use, well, we don't use, but you know what I mean, we possess, and that uh, they would argue have ensured peace for decades. Uh, yeah, like once he was done, they're like, you know, thanks, geek, see you later. And uh, yeah, definitely something to be said about that. But overall, you know, the movie's enjoyable. Uh, one note, if you are thinking about bringing your children to this movie, definitely do not. Uh, I, I would say that even if it were just the F-bombs that get thrown around. But, uh, no, there's definitely some moments in the movie where it's like, you know, all right, so now we get to see Oppenheimer's affair, and we're going to drive home the point that, you know, he's he's a real human being, and uh, we're going to do this by showing you everything there is to show with the lady he's with. And we see this, like, more than once. So, yeah, I just, you know, randomly sex beast mode for Oppenheimer here. Uh, but, in fairness, that is all part of the human condition, and they're trying to show a man, not just the bomb. So, you know, it is what it is, but it's there, so now you know. And there's a, definitely a later scene that kind of brings it all back up again that's very awkward for everybody, so... So, on that note, uh, the one other thing that really stood out to me was just the huge cast of this movie. Uh, there were all kinds of stars that I had no idea were in this movie. Like, obviously, I knew Cillian Murphy was in the movie, because he's on the posters and everything else. But, uh, yeah, like, the rest of these people, like, I did not know Robert Downey Jr. was in the movie. And whenever his character first comes on screen, it took me a minute, I was like, is that 
Robert Downey Jr.? I guess it is. Uh, I had to actually look up who Josh Hartnett played because I didn't recognize him at all. Uh, Emily Blunt plays his wife. Uh, Florence Pugh plays the uh, the love interest. Uh, you also have a very like a blink and you'll miss it, and even then you won't know who it was. Gary Oldman. Like I, I had to look up. Like I watched another review and someone was like, "Yeah, Gary Oldman's in the movie." I was like, "What the hell are you talking about? Gary Oldman's not in this movie." Sure enough, he is. Uh, President Truman. Uh, you got uh, Jason Clark, uh, Alden Ehrenreich. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Uh, the guy that played the younger version of Han Solo in the movie Solo. Uh, Kenneth Branagh. And a few very brief parts as uh, Niels Bohr, I believe. Matthew Modine. Didn't catch who he was playing. Uh, Remy Malek. Uh, also in the movie. A uh, guy that uh, played the uh, lead singer of Queen in the uh, Freddie Mercury. In the Freddie Mercury movie. Uh, bit part, but... Very satisfying at the end whenever he sticks it to the guy that stuck it to Oppenheimer. Uh, Casey Affleck, who I was surprised to see because I thought he was embroiled in some kind of scandal, but I must be misremembering. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like the list could go on. But just, just, there's so many characters in this movie, and it seemed like half of Hollywood was like, I went in on the next Christopher Nolan movie, and he's like, don't worry, I've got a thousand parts, you're all invited, come on in. So, Yeah. Uh, and, you know, like I said, makeup on some, I had no idea who they were. Like, Josh Hartnett's in a third of the movie, I had no idea who he was. Gary Oldman's in the movie for two minutes, definitely didn't know it was him. But, uh, yeah, so, if you're a fan of any of those people, it's worth checking out, because it's top grade acting from everybody involved. Uh, so yeah, this, uh, this movie overall, I mean, I hate to call it a masterpiece, because it does have a handful of very tiny flaws, but, like, it is very well put together, if you are at all interested in the subject matter, even if it is just the Manhattan Project chunks, that's like the middle third of the movie, uh, it's worth your time to watch. And I would watch it in a theater. I didn't see it in IMAX, so I can't speak to that. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is very, very little use of CGI in this movie. Uh, whenever they're like, hey, we need to build this city out in the middle of the New Mexico desert. Well, that's what they do. They built real sets and buildings and everything. And uh, the bomb test, uh, I believe, was actually a conventional explosion just zoomed in or something. Because uh, it's not, you know, it's not some giant towering mushroom cloud that sweeps everything away that you see in the actual bomb tests. It's a lot more subdued, and like I said, it's not the point of the movie. You know, it's, it's just a thing that happens at some point. So... You know, so if you want to know more about Robert Oppenheimer and the events of his life, uh, pre, during, and post Manhattan Project, this is definitely the movie for you. If you're just a fan of good, competent movie making or Christopher Nolan in general, this is the movie for you. If you're a fan of Cillian Murphy, this is the movie for you. But overall, great movie, definitely worth checking out. And uh, and yes, for those of you interested. He does say the line that he's quoted as having said. No, it's actually not at the test site. Uh, it's way earlier in the movie, uh, whenever he's reading it from the original Sanskrit. It is not something he came up with. It is from a Hindu text. So, yes. Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys thought of all this. Uh, you know, when there's movies worth watching, we try to get out to actually watch them. Uh, but it hasn't happened a whole lot yet so far this year. I think this is the fourth movie I've gone to go watch, not counting the second time I saw Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So yeah, I think it was I think it's literally been this, Indiana Jones, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and Renfield. I might be forgetting a movie, but it hasn't been, you know, been pretty dull so far this year. Uh, so yeah, this one's definitely worth your time. Uh, if you gotta wait for streaming, you know, so be it. But it's definitely worth seeing in a theater. Uh, just for, you know, for theater's sake, it's good. But, uh, yeah, so let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, I don't know what to say there. You know, want to see more? Tell me. I mean, you're going to see more because I like watching movies, so you're going to see more reviews no matter what. If you stick with the channel, which I hope you do. Uh, and on that note, like, share, subscribe, all that other fun YouTube stuff. 
But uh, otherwise, see you folks at the movies.